All right. We are back. We spoke to John Selleck earlier about the presidential election being a toss up the margins, razor thin in all of the uh, battleground states here in, in Michigan, particularly close. But after the election, it doesn't really matter who wins. The fact is that half of our country is going to be unhappy with the results. But whoever is elected also has to be president of everybody. That's the idea here. Uh, Roshini uh, Rajkumar is the political strategist, often a visitor uh, for us here on WJR and All Talk. She's an attorney and host of the Crisis Files podcast. Roshini, thank you so much for joining us today. It's so great to be with you. Happy Monday. Yeah, happy Monday. It's a beautiful day here in Detroit, so we're happy uh, We're happy about that and uh, heading to some uh, record-breaking temperatures here. But it looks all happy and sunshine. Uh, but when you talk about this, it gets a little... Uh, it gets a little testy sometimes. So the Bush v. Gore race was tight, but it wasn't as acrimonious as this race. Um, so I wonder, how are we going to get past all this disagreement that we've had in this country, Roshini, and really govern for everyone when there's been so much name calling in this race? Yeah, it really has gotten so much more acrimonious in the last 24 years, right? It's hard to believe that was so long ago. Yeah. And then it was pretty uh, extraordinary what we were living through as a nation. And I think many of us thought we wouldn't get through that. But guess what? We live to tell the tale. Here we are, which on the positive side, Marie, shows us that Americans are strong people. And what keeps us together is the thing I call the good book, the Constitution. And if we can remember that the Constitution has survived nearly 300 years, and when you really think back to when it was founded and we had 13 states, you know, the colonies really, we weren't even states yet. And here we are, this huge nation, Hawaii and Alaska on top of it. So we are a strong people and when we can think about our shared values that's where it does start and whether it's a family member a neighbor a coworker with whom you disagree if we can go back to those shared values and a lot of those values come straight from the constitution we live in a country where we are free to express our beliefs to have different religions so all of those things were put into writing in our constitution. And I think when in doubt, if even when we get emotional, when in doubt, go back to the constitution and what it lays out for us and just realize that it's allowing each of us individually, as well as our neighbor, as well as Joe Schmo in Maryland, Texas, or Hawaii to live their life the way they want to live. So it might seem like that's so simple, but that's what I'm going to say as a crisis strategist. If we can really think about those shared values that we have as individuals, our own integrity and ethics, as well as that constitution that plants on all of us some shared values because we live in this country. You remind me of the nun I had in third grade when uh, <laughs> one of the students would have uh, like an existential question about something or another. And she'd always remind us, remember, Look to the Ten Commandments. They're our, they're our guide. <laughs> and, and you are, I mean, it sounds a little, you know, it sounds a little simplistic, but the bottom line is that that's true. Now, I, I'm playing devil's advocate here with you, Roshini. Some people would say that our Constitution is under threat. Well, it definitely is under threat. And Maria, I have to say, I've been called a lot of things, but I've never been compared <laughs> to a nun before. So thank you. I mean, I my, like that, my late though. Catholic mother would be so excited. She's shining, you know, smiling down from yeah. heaven. Well, I'm going to start by saying this. Yes, the Constitution has been under threat. It's partly because we are not, to the extent from when you and I were children, being taught civics in school to the extent we used to. We're not remembering in college and beyond our constitution and those basic values that have set up our governments all over the country, whether you're talking about a school board, a city, a county, a state, or any kind of federal institution, they all have the same blueprint, which is the United States constitution. And so to the extent that a lot of things have been warped, many people have been living in an unconstitutional way. I also want to interject 
some feedback from one of my shows, The Crisis Files. Uh, she's our relationship contrib- contributor, and her name is Dr. Karen Anderson Abril. And we have her coming on in an upcoming episode, in fact, which will drop the Monday before Thanksgiving to talk about relationships. Some of her foundational principles include respect. So you have to have respect. And what I think we've forgotten in our country, sadly, is just because someone has a different opinion or is voting for someone different from whom we are voting for doesn't mean they do not deserve respect. Mm -hmm. They still deserve respect because, remember, the Constitution says we can have that freedom of expression and freedom of thought, really. That's what we have to remember, and it boils down to that foundation of respect. I, you know, I like that you say that we need to emphasize civics in high school. I remember my class, my civics class, and there was more than one that we had. And I remember that. But I, not only should we be taught civics, civility should also be taught as well. Because this has become, I mean, you look at some of the rhetoric from the weekend, this from our, from our, uh, from Trump and Harris, that, that just goes beyond the boundaries, goes beyond what we've been used to. Moving on just a bit here, what do you think the winner of the election, the presidential race here that we're talking about, what do they have to do right after, right off the bat to remind everyone that we're Americans, that we're, right, we're in it together, that we're all governed by the Constitution? What do they need to do right away? Well, right away, whomever wins needs to call the person who loses and say, look, this was this was a great uh, fight. We we really brought out a lot of people. We we are we probably brought out more, more voters than ever. Mm. Let's do what we can together from our different spaces to make the country strong and to rebuild. And then what each side needs to tell to its followers is you got to respect the decision that comes out of the election, and let's not tear down whomever wins. If, if you didn't get the right person, but let's build them up and let's try to work together. And this is where the, the top of the ticket, uh, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, can both remind everyone below them, from the different offices to regular voters, now's the time to remember that shared values and respect. Now is the time to do that to show the rest of the world what America is all about. So it does, t- it will take strong leadership from both sides. And I agree with you, Maria. It's, it's not been pretty when I see and hear things that are coming out of the mouths of these two people that, you know, frankly, have such uh, privilege compared to most, compared with most of the country. So I'd love to see them clean up their acts, both language and otherwise. And let's kind of take this last two weeks to really have spirited discussion and passionate debate about the very principles uh, our country was built on. Yeah, what's important to voters. So what do you think uh, could happen if these results are disputed uh, for a protracted period of time? Well, I I really don't like to even think about that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's probably, no matter who wins, I have a sense the forecaster in me, future caster in me says there will be definite uh, contradiction from whomever loses. And I, I say that goes for both sides. So that is why leading up to it, every state needs to really take control of how it conducts elections and make sure that each state has its own house in order and that everything is fair and it's following the, its own rules that it sets as far as when you need to get those ballots in, if you're not voting in person on election day, and all of those things. So now more than ever, Marie, we need to be following the rules that each state sets up and that the federal government sets up when it comes to election day. Roshini Rakshkumar, political strategist, attorney, and host of the Crisis Files podcast. Always wonderful to talk with you and to get your insight on things. We appreciate it. We will continue here. Yeah, we'll continue here on All Talk with Kevin Dietz. We'll be returning in a moment.